regular meeting of the Detroit Lake City Council is called to order. Uh, welcome to everyone who is in attendance this evening. And as is traditional with the council, I'd like to all ask you all to please rise and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The uh, minutes of the regular City Council meeting held March 10th, 2015 are before the Council. Is there anyone in the audience or any member of the Council that wishes to make any uh, changes to the minutes as printed? If not, I would entertain a motion to second for approval. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the regular City Council meeting held March 10th, 2015. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Uh, for everybody's information, uh, Alderman Owney will not be here this evening, and Alderman Imholt will be here, but he's a CPA and he's right in the middle of his busy time, and uh, he'll be here a little late. The consent agenda is before the council, and all items with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered separately in its normal sequence on the agenda. I have agenda item um, 5E I'd like to take off the consent agenda. Is there any anybody else that wants anything adjusted on the consent agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion for approval with the one item 5A or 5E removed. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the consent agenda with item 5E removed from the consent agenda. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. At this time, I would like to invite uh, our new police officer, Josie Johnson, to come forward and be sworn in. you want to be right here? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Josie Johnson. I, Josie Johnson. Promise that I will humbly serve. That I, I promise that I will humbly serve. All residents. All residents. With a response to their crisis. With response to their crisis. With compassion. With compassion. Sincerity and concern. With sincerity and concern. Patience, kindness, and respect. Patience, kindness, and respect. I promise that I will at all times. I promise I will at all times. Conduct myself in a manner. Conduct myself in a manner. That reflects positively on the Detroit Lakes Police Department. That reflects positively on the Detroit Lakes Police Department. And the city of Detroit Lakes. In the city of Detroit Lakes. Finally, I promise to follow the policies. Finally, I promise to follow the policies. Of the Detroit Lakes Police Department. Of the Detroit Lakes Police Department. Uphold the laws of our state and nation. Uphold the laws of our state and nation. And the ordinances. And the ordinances. And the ordinances. And the ordinances. Of the city of Detroit Lakes. Of the city of Detroit Lakes. And that I will faithfully discharge my duties. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. You're hired. <laughs> Introduce anybody that might be here from your family or tell us where you're from, or if not, that's fine. I grew up in Frazee. Uh, I spent the last eight years working for the Becker County Sheriff's Office as a corrections officer. Um, I also spent the last three years working as an EMT for Essential Health, and I spent the last year working as an AISMB. Um, I currently serve as a first responder for Frazee Rescue. Uh, in the audience, I have my parents. Stepdaughter, stepson, my husband, and my son who's on the floor back there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just look forward to serving the city of Detroit Lakes. So thank you. All right. Also tonight, if you care, we have a new firefighter. Is Shannon here? There she is. You're right back there. So you know the drill now, right? <laughs> Raise your right hand, please. I, Shanda Smith, I promise that I will humbly serve. 
all customers with an urgent response to their crisis with compassion, sincerity and concern, patience, kindness, and respect. I promise that I will, at all times, conduct myself in a manner that reflects positively on the fire department and the city of Detroit. Finally, I promise to follow the policies of the fire department, uphold the laws of our state and nation, and the ordinances of the city of Detroit Lakes, and that I will faithfully discharge my duties to the best of my ability. So help me out. terrible allergies so I'm going to drink a lot of coke tonight so, anyway also tonight uh, we've got some Girl Scouts here and I've got a proc proclamation that I would like to read and then present to the Girl Scouts that are here in attendance whereas April 19th through the 25th marks Girl, St Girl Scout <coughs> Volunteer Appreciation Week 2015 which honors all volunteers in Girl Scouting Whereas over a hundred years, Girl Scout volunteers have helped build millions of girls and women of courage, confidence, and character to make the world a better place. And whereas through the dedication, time, and talent of volunteers of different backgrounds, abilities, and areas of expertise, the Girl Scout organization thrives for girls in so many settings. Whereas through Girl Scouting's unique leadership development program, girls defined leadership by making the world a better place, by discovering, connecting, and taking action in their communities. And whereas Girl Scout volunteers offer opportunities available to them in STEM, financial literacy, environmental stewardship, healthy living, self-expression, and other fields that can expand their horizons. Now therefore, I, Matt Brink, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor, do hereby applaud and uh, the commitment uh, Girl Scout volunteers have made to America's girls and proudly proclaim the week of April 19th through the 25th, 2015 as Girl Scout Volunteer Appreciation Week in the city of Detroit Lakes. Without objection of the council, uh, Tom and Pam Mortensen are here, and they just want to briefly address the council about an event that's going to take place tomorrow afternoon. Tom and Pam. Mayor, city council members, staff, and citizens, want to invite everyone tomorrow at 1 o'clock to the Grand Army of the Republic rededication over there on Washington Avenue, 317 Washington Avenue. It's part of history and we appreciate the fact that the city council, the boards, and the city staff, Bob and, and Tom and Brad especially, have worked so hard to help make this a reality for our community. We want to thank you and again invite everyone to please come up and be part of history. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to the city of Detroit Lakes. I mean, you guys have been fantastic. Anything you wanted to do, okay, we'll do it. And <laughs> you have just been so helpful, and it's wonderful. Thank you. I hope we hear that all night this <laughs> evening. <laughs> At this time, I would move to uh, item 4C, and that's uh, regarding the Northwest Water Carnival. I'd like to introduce to the council the co-admirals for this year's Water Carnival, Alma Alanas and Nate Woodard, if you would come forward. 
Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, we just want to stop in and address the city council members and the city of Detroit Lakes on uh, this year's happenings. Um, in front of you, you have a um, sort of agenda of what will be happening in Detroit Lakes over the 10 days of the Latter Carnival, July 10th through the 19th. Um, we'll let you read through it and ask any questions if needed, but I did want to point out a couple changes. Um, some new things that are happening this year at the Water Carnival. Uh, one of them being a um, obstacle course that we'll be conducting along the city beach on uh, Saturday, July 11th, which we'll be discussing in further detail um, with uh, Tom Gulan. Uh, there won't be any additional necessities from the city on that day, um, so we're hoping that it'll just be a great attended event. And the second major change that we'll be making to our schedule is on Saturday, July 19th, where we normally host a fun run or walk. Uh, this is something that we are looking for the Council of the City of Detroit to hopefully approve as we will be changing it into a bubble bash. Um, so basically, it'll be bubbles at the beginning of and at the end of the route of a 5K and bubbles at two other spots along the route. So we're very excited about that. We're hoping our numbers will get a little bit bigger um, we hit about 220 runners last year, which we were very excited about. And if we could double that, that would be even better. Um, so those are the two changes that we have, major changes this year. Um, and at this time, if you have any questions. Any questions by the, do, Jamie? Yeah. Um, I, I think, you, do you have a dog event on the on the beach, actually? We do. Yep. Dog the dog plunge. Um, you know, we have this no dogs on the beach rule. Is it possible to hold that in the park itself and off the beach area? Uh, it, well, considering they're jumping in the water. Oh, in the water. Yeah, off the dock. Yeah, off the dock. Yeah. Um, we can certainly. All right. <laughs> we can have them jump through hoops. I suppose we can go ahead and, and, and change it to that. Um, um, but, well, I was just to say one other thing I mentioned too um, is with the uh, Washington Avenue uh, construction. We had uh, spoke last night uh, about having to reroute the parade um, just because of the construction. And um, uh, last night we decided that the best route would probably be just to go straight down Summit, uh, right to Willow Street, and then back to Washington and finish like normal. Um, that we felt like that would be the best route through the construction. So. Any issues, Chief, with that proposed route? Okay. We don't think so. Oh, okay. We'll work it out. We'll definitely talk, so it'll work. Brad, anything? No, we talked about it. We've been planning it for a while, uh, uh, so we know we just have to provide other barricades, and like the Chief said, we'll make it work. So what is the ac specific action we need to do here with this, with the water carnival? Because we certainly want to have the water car. Yeah. <laughs> we, need it, we need somebody to make a motion to approve it. Approve the water carnival or all the permits? All the activities and permits. And permits. I would entertain. Anything else you want to add, you guys? No, those are the only major changes that we have. Yeah, we're just really excited to have the, this is the 80th annual, so very, very excited. We'll have Sawyer Brown coming this year, too. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of past admirals that are on the council, but they're both not here right now. <laughs> anyway, so I would entertain a motion for approval for the water carnival for the dance permits, parade permits, street closings, use of public facilities, uh, and allowing leash dogs on the beach for the dock, dog jumping, and other necessary considerations. Mayor, I'd make that motion that we would uh, support the JCs in their 80th annual water carnival and then we give them all the help that we can and with, especially with the items they just mentioned and also that we'll help them with the new uh, parade route because of the Washington Avenue construction this year. And then we'll go ahead and uh, work with the police department, the street department in getting that worked out and uh, help them any way that we can. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded and I'm not gonna try to repeat what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> on motion. <laughs> Discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion is carried. Well, good luck, and we think it's just a tremendous event for the city and looking forward to it. And I'm ready to buy my booster button anytime they're available. So. We will give you a call as soon as those become available. They're getting printed as we speak. So thank you so much, and we're looking forward to holding this event this summer.
All right, thank, thank you. you. I know there's other people in the audience that have agenda items. The next item that the council is going to take up is item 5A and B. And I'm just going to put you on notice that I think there's a number of people here that are that are interested in this item and it may uh, take some time to get through it. So uh, I apologize, but uh, that's just the order of business here. But before the council takes up items 5A and 5B, I want to state that in regard to item 5B, that I received a letter from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources dated April 8, 2015, that, it, that informed the city that if the project were approved, that's the project that's referenced in item 5B, the Department of Natural Resources would initiate litigation against the city. I immediately forwarded that letter to the city attorney, and the city attorney uh, recommended uh, that the council go into closed session so that the city attorney can advise the council with regard to the legal issues, strength and weaknesses of the strategic choices available to the city and relative legal merits of the threatened case. I request that a motion be introduced and seconded to close the meeting and remove the council to the committee room on the basis of the attorney client privilege as set forth in Minnesota statute 13B.05 subdivision 3B and Minnesota Statute 595.02B in order for the council to meet with the city attorney in closed session to discuss strategy regarding the city's position in the threatened litigation by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources against the city. So I would entertain a motion at this time. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to go into closed session uh, and for the reasons that I stated and I would ask the motioner and seconder that your motion would include those things that I cited. Thank you. Discussion on the motion? Jamie? You know, I, I'd like to offer an alternative suggestion, which would be that we defer action on this item and enter into a, just a conversation with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources regarding, you know, how we can accomplish redevelopment on, on the lake. Is that a motion? No, it's a comment. A suggestion? I think you have a motion on the floor, so. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion is carried. I'm oh, sorry, Jamie opposed. I want to also state on the record that in order to implement strategy, the city and its attorney need absolute confidentiality with regard to those choices, making it necessary to close the meeting. Before the council removes itself to the committee room, I want to advise the public that this regular city council meeting is not adjourned and that the council will return to open session on the conclusion of the closed meeting. So with that, uh, let's retire to the conference room and we'll be back in a little bit. We're back. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, there's actually two items that have to do with the proposed uh, project that I'm sure most of you are here for. And that's item 5A and 5B. And before we get into that, I just want to make a statement here that we have a lot of people here tonight, and I just want to set out a few guidelines and rules for how we're going to uh, conduct the meeting and the discussion. Uh, it's important, I think, that we're courteous and polite uh, to each other, and this has been a long tradition of the City Council here in Detroit Lakes. But first of all, uh, typically we have uh, city staff, or uh, in this case, perhaps the developer would provide an overview of the matter uh, under consideration. Uh, we may ask Larry or other staff to uh, advise us of any uh, reports, hearings, or advisory committee recommendations that pertain to the matter. Uh, anybody that wishes to, to speak should do so at the podium and we ask that you would state your name and address for our minutes and for the record. Uh, person speaking will be allowed to ask questions. Uh, questions should be directed to the mayor, uh, B, who is the chair of the meeting, and I may redirect them to appropriate staff or council persons or whoever for a response. Any comments made by the public should be directed again to the council and the mayor, and comments should be factual and relevant to the matter being considered. 
the council members are allowed to question persons presenting comments or information to the council. In order to ensure all persons who desire to speak have an opportunity to do so, speakers are asked to try and limit their comments to three minutes or less. Uh, most of the council has been at all of the previous meetings that have been held and have heard uh, pretty much all the testimony and, and comments up to, up to date. I do reserve the right to limit the speaker's time or to minimize redundant comments in order to ensure adequate time to hear all the information and allow time for council discussion. Once public comments have concluded, I will ask uh, the chairman of the CDC committee, Alderman Imhole, for a motion. Uh, once the motion is made, uh, we will limit the discussion and debate to the council members only. Council members and members of the public are asked to be respectful of others and to refrain from arguing uh, with each other. So with that, uh, I would call on, maybe we should call on, on the developer first to give us a, an overview of your proposed project and we'll go from there. That's good. And if you would state your name and address for the record. My name is Troy Hookstra and our business address is 921 First Street North in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, please, as a council, I could just set the pictures out so we talking about how we all got here and what language the community is. We're all looking at the same thing. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to trouble printing these nice pictures. I'm going to be a shame to have sitting over there. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Approximately 20 months ago, I met with um, partners in this project who were interested in developing this site. They had tried to develop other projects, condos, and had been approached by a number of other people. Um, it took about six months of meetings and convincing to try to move this effort forward because they were very skeptical. They had tried a lot of things, had spent a lot of money, and had no results. Um, we started with the core of the property, which I'll try to help everybody see here. The core of the property was primarily this section of land where the hotel and the restaurant are shown. We then realized that we were going to be short parking and other uh, space, and so we were able to acquire a home where the two parking lots are shown. And there was two additional homes on this property, this property. We spent roughly 14 months working with the engineers, working with our architect. We submitted that plan to the Pelican River uh, group. They were given a permit. We felt confident about the project. Hadn't really run into um, any real vocal or aggressive opposition. You know, I do this for a living, so I'm used to that, and we really hadn't run into much of that. Um, so we were optimistic, and that's why we brought it forward to the Planning Commission. At the Planning Commission meeting, um, we were asked to try to reduce our impervious and increase our parking, which are two opposing forces that are kind of difficult. So we were kind of sent back out to work with our lunch, and in the meantime, we purchased and have options on two additional homes. We purchased the rights to the home on the green space between the first and second parking lot and the home that um, is located right behind Lake Shirts on the last piece of green space shown on our property. So we now have nearly three acres of property. We reduced our impervious, we increased our parking, um, and have taken a lot of risk to do this. To get those last pieces, an appeal to the Planning Commission. We not only had to buy the home, we had to buy a home for the occupant in a neighboring city and sell them on a contract for deed because they could not get financed. I think we've taken every measure and really taken some risk to try to see this thing through. We went back to the Planning Commission with that plan, with what you're seeing here, that's represented. We were approved on a 7-2 vote. It was brought forward to the Community Development Committee that group also gave us uh, a recommendation. 
in the meantime, we understand that there are concerns. We're not bad guys. We're here trying to do a good project on a corner that clearly needs a project. Um, I understand this DNR thing has concerned some people. What I would say to that, and I'm going to read from my engineer, is that uh, the city engineer, the Pelican River Group, is evidenced by the permit they've given us. Our engineer have all stated publicly that this PUD and this project will actually improve the runoff and the quality of the water coming off that site. As far as I know to date, um, no one has brought forward besides generalized statements anything to the contrary. So I find it ironic that the DNR is telling us not to do a project that will actually improve the water quality and the runoff of this site and of this lake. Um, but that's really, you know, I can give my comment, but I'll let everyone else judge it for what it is. This project will create over half a million dollars a year in wages for employees in this community. It's a $12 million project that will bring jobs to construction workers. 40% of everything but the land, which is about nine and a half million, so 40% of nine and a half million will go out to employees of companies working on this job site. And so when I look at that economic impact, the fact that we're removing blight, I know that there's a lot of people here who have questions, may not be for this project, but I also know there's many more who are for this. It's very easy to be against something. So I'd like to ask the council to vote in favor of this and to be for a project that we have spent a lot of time and effort trying to perfect. Um, and I would ask the community to give it a chance. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions for Troy directly? If, if not, we'll continue to take more comments, Troy. And uh, if there's questions that are directed to me that are appropriate for you to try to answer, I'll direct them to you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anything that we, we think the staff should add to what what uh, has been said there? Is there any anything you feel at this point? Otherwise, if, if not. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, most of us, if not all of us, have been to several of these meetings and have heard uh, a lot of you speak. And, and, and so uh, with that, I would open it up to the public for anybody else that would like to make some comments. Again, try to keep it to three minutes. If there's something new, certainly we want to hear that and we're not going to you know restrict that but you know if you've already stated this to the planning your position to the planning commission or the cdc uh try to limit your comments as much as possible so we can uh, get through this in a reasonable time and continue on we've got other items on the agenda so i would invite anybody who wants to speak to take this opportunity okay Pretty not what I expected, but okay. I, oh, I'm sorry. My name is Kelly Wolf. I live at 15305 Leisure Drive in Trey Lakes. I haven't been a part of the earlier meetings, just reading what I've um, from the newspaper and things like that. Um, and so in addition to the concerns that have already been expressed through the process so far, I had to write this out because I don't want to speak off the cuff. Um, I just have a few thoughts that I'd like to add. First of all, thank you um, to the community development and the city council for the work you do for our community. It, it shows. I um, support encouraging economic growth of our community. Um, however, it seems to me that the cost of this potential hotel, condominium, restaurant project to existing businesses from what it may take away, since we do already have a great variety of um, hotels with a variety of amenities and price ranges for visitors. <coughs> but it, what, what it would take away from existing businesses and the remaining ecological integrity of the lake and shoreline far outweighs the benefits um, to most of us. 
it, it seems to me that a hotel complex crammed into a too small location would attract or I struggle to believe that it would attract more visitors or dollars to Detroit Lakes. However, providing additional family and visitor opportunities to enhance the great city park, beach, and other nearby attractions can bring more visitors and dollars. So I feel like a project like this would um, detract from the ecological integrity of the adjacent shoreline and the lake. And, um, perhaps there's an opportunity instead for potential environmental or community enhancement. It's been noted that um, the corner is blighted and a few other options have been brought up to the Community Development Committee. But one idea might be for the committee to actively seek out, and maybe you already have, but <laughs> seek out an enterprise that would complement the site and the community. Something that could be the right contrast to the current proposal. And an example you know, might be a hands-on science and environmental learning center. Having this located next to the lake and adjacent park would be a great place to draw visiting and local families <clears throat> and children alike to help them learn about science and nature. And it's not something that we already have, but it would complement um, other attributes nearby the city, like Tamarack and Sucker Creek. Um, they're just, and, and with, the, with the bike trail being um, added on to and further enhanced, it would, it would just add to that a possibility for people to gain insight on the different communities that they would encounter on their biking travels. You know, a location like this is, um, it, it just seems like it could serve the community better than, than being a hotel. <laughs> um, it just seems like there are a lot of other options. Kelly, are you getting close to the end? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. Um, it seems like the current proposal adds more pavement near a treasured and already overstretched lakeshore and a hotel development that would detract from the aesthetics of beach, lake, and park to local citizens and visitors. So I just urge you to deny the final approval of this proposed development and I ask, what really is the purpose of zoning and regulations if so many variances, permits, and rezoning are necessary or allowed for just one project? because just one often turns into just one more. And not that it's a bad project, there probably are better locations though in our city for a project like this without further jeopardizing the lake's integrity and shoreline. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anybody else that would like to make a comment? I sort of let Kelly go a little bit over three minutes, but she's new, so. But let's really try to limit it. And Bob, we've heard from Bob. Bob, good evening. Hi, Bob. I'm here. I'm a leader at hydrologist. I'm retired. I worked this job for 32 years. Address, Bob. Address. And I'm sorry? Address, please. 1241 Minnesota Avenue in Detroit. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I wasn't going to say anything tonight because you have my documents that I passed on to you and my arguments why it should be denied. But I have to address one of the comments that the developer made just recently. And he said he finds it incredible that the DNR would tell you not to do something that's going to improve the water quality. There's not just the runoff that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a raft of variances that are way out of reasonableness when you look at a variance for a project. By doubling the height, that's a major change. And it's not just the runoff. And the Pelican River wrote you guys a letter that said they were opposed to this project. And yet, people want you to think that they are in support of it. They simply gave a permit for that part of it. And yet, they wrote you a letter and said they were opposed to it. Okay, so Bob, I think you're covering ground you have covered. All right. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Yeah, I have one other issue, okay. and that is, why was the DNR not brought into this project early on so that you would not be surprised by the letter? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to make a comment? Yes. 
and, and Willis, we've already heard from you too in the past, so <laughs> welcome to the meeting tonight. Please, please be brief. We, we, we've heard you and... and I will, and the comments I make are beyond what I um, made before. My name is Joe Smatson. My address is 4516 State Highway 34, Osage, Minnesota. I'm the former regional director for the Minnesota Machine Control Agency here in town. Um, what I'm concerned about now is that this body is about to make a decision whether or not to go into legal battle with another state agency. You each are subunits of state government, and as a taxpayer, I have a little bit of problem when you're going to pit your attorneys against state attorneys and fight this out. Before you do that, I think there's a great deal of misunderstanding about what shoreland zoning rules are supposed to accomplish, the philosophy behind them, the theory behind them, and the mechanics behind them, because it's often misrepresented. I hear people saying that well, it's about the environmentalists against the developers, or it's that the project will actually improve the water quality rather than deteriorate, this kind of thing. Th those are little truths, but they d escape the entire big picture. Why shoreland zoning is what it is, why it's incremental, why when a development is, comes into a new parcel, it should be upgraded to the full standards. I came here in 1977, <coughs> shortly after the city of Detroit Lakes upgraded its wastewater treatment plant. It would not have been good enough to improve the wastewater treatment plant that you had a little bit. Your downstream lake homeowners, um, Sally and Melissa, were suffering because your treatment plant was not doing the job it needed to do, and to have gone halfway to the standards to get what it needed would not have been good enough, so a little bit of improvement while I recognize the developer doing that is good. You need to get all the way to the mark of improving lot by lot, because there are many lots around the lake that are non-compliant, but when they're gonna be revised, that's the time to bring them up to the mark. Anything short of that really needs to be justified, and none of your findings of fact provide sufficient justification for that. So before you go into lawsuit, would you take some time to understand why the rules are the way they are, underpinning philosophy, so that you don't file a suit frivolously and needlessly that you're going to lose because you don't understand that? Well, thank you I, very much. okay, thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Ben Grimsley, 800 West Avenue. I'd first like to reference a comment about everybody repeating things that have been said in prior meetings. There was no recording of those meetings or no, not necessarily unless they wrote a letter, an official um, record of those comments. And so I think they all have a right to repeat that now in front of the full council, whether you've heard them or not before or not. But I'm the chairman and the mayor and that's my rules. Letter. That's my rules, Ben, so. so. the DNR sent a letter on the 7th of this month referencing a community development meeting for the 9th with four members on it that explicitly bring that up and it was not delivered to those council members nor discussed at that meeting. I have no reason to believe why these people uh, shouldn't be concerned about getting their com comments part of the public record. Regarding the rezoning, I find it unfortunate that for, I've heard 18 months, 12 months, there was a project being discussed internally in the city, but when we're rezoning our residential area, I think that the citizens should be allowed more time to provide feedback on that than they did by just hearing about it um, before, before the planning and zoning meeting. And what I would like, uh, and it's been, brought up uh, is for you guys to work with the developer on something that meets our ordinances or varies slightly and not excessive and excessive anything that is in excess of over 100 percent on four ordinances that's extremely excessive i'd like to see this this property developed but i'd like you guys to, to table the vote go back to the uh, planning commission and find something mutually acceptable with the developer and what the residents are asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments? Hi. Um, hi, my name is Kim. 
Heights, Fern Billing, 242 Shore Drive. Um, well, I uh, have not been outwardly involved in this, but I've been following it. And would just like to throw my hat in with Kelly's ideas. Um, I'm one of those tree hugger <laughs> environmentalists. Uh, but aside from that, um, and I think I can actually set that aside and say I think that this project is just way too big for that space. Um, I think that the variances were made for reasons, good reasons, and that there should be a lot more transparency to the public. Many people I talked to didn't have a clue of what was going on here, um, even as little as a week or two ago. <coughs> <coughs> colleagues. Um, I would have liked to have felt that the general public had, was addressed a lot more than it has been, uh, so the decision has not just been in the hands of a few people. Um, I do care a lot about this area, I'm a native, and, um, I'm not trying to go back to the good old days. I just want to see it developed in a very in a beautiful way that um, keeps the character of the lake, which is only part of the environment. The lake, you know, could be just a hole in the ground with water in it. Or it could have the proper amount of sky and land and, and nature around it. Um, and it could be a beautiful corner, as Kelly said, for a public um, um, natural um, situation. But aside, again, aside from that, I feel like it has just gone way too big without the public being addressed. Thank Thanks, Fern. Anybody else that would like to speak? Kyle Brown, 1313 Lake Avenue. Um, a lot of the problems have been talked about, just as, as you all well know. You've heard them. Hopefully you've heard them. Um, it seems like either a yes vote or a no vote is going to get you sued. And uh, hopefully when he went in there, you know, we realized that whatever comes out of this is probably going to be an appeal process, um, not a new trial. So. As of such, you built yourself nothing but a positive case for the development. All of your facts are fine and they're in that way. So I would encourage you to not think you're going to get a second chance. So this is the night to make the right decisions, make the right recommendations, go back to the table, whatever you choose. But this is your chance to get it right. Uh, you're not going to get a second chance. You're going to have to dig in your heels and defend whatever decision you make. So hopefully let's take the time to think about the things that people have said to you in the previous meetings. And I call the right decision for the town. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? <laughs> okay. Uh, if not, uh, I would call on Alderman Imholt, who's the chairman of our community development committee. And there's two items. The first item, Bruce, is the uh, first reading of the ordinance rezoning. I think part of the, the area that's being developed. So I would turn it over to Bruce. Uh, Your Honor, the Community Development Committee has a resolution to an ordinance amending section 20 of the zoning ordinance rezoning an area from R2, one and two family residents in district to RLB residential. I see we've got a little spelling error there, by the way. And the first time I've seen this. Re residential tail, it says. Residential lakefront business. So let's make sure we correct that. Uh, at 1329 through 1330, 1355 Lake Avenue, the Community Development Committee has reviewed this as, as the Planning Commission and recommends approval and ISO move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to give first reading to an ordinance amending Section 20 of the Zoning Ordinance, rezoning an area from R2, one and two family residents. Where did, where did the was a mistake again, Bruce? It says resident tail. It says tail instead of residential. 
Oh, okay. Oh. To RLB Residential Lakefront Business District at 1329 through 1355 Lake Avenue. I would open it up to the council for discussion at this time. I, I will uh, state that if this uh, motion passes and the second motion on item 5B passes, it would be my intention to uh, try to find a date when we could conduct a special meeting to give second reading to the ordinance, uh, you know, perhaps uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks or somewhere in that range, I would poll the council to make sure we had uh, full representation if we could. So with that, I would open it up to council discussion, comments, Question. Mr. Mayor, yes. is this the? Uh, I'm brand new here, so. Oh, that's fine. Is this a proper time to make a motion to table all discussion and have it go back to the planning committee? If or you is this choose not? to do so, you certainly can, right? Sure. If, if you choose to make a motion to table now, would be an appropriate time to do that. If you don't want any discussion of, if you don't want to proceed on either issue, just so you know that five A and five B are separate. Yep. Okay, then I would make a motion to table this and send it back to the Planning Commission. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Oops. Motion's been made and seconded. Now, when we have a motion on the table and we get a motion to table... You, most, you vote on the motion to table first. Okay, is but, there a discussion on that motion? But I don't understand what this means. Is it this item 5A or is it item well, 5 5A and 5B, that's why oh. I'm asking because I really... I mean, I'm brand new, so... I agree that this whole project should be tabled, go back to the Planning Commission, start over, see if we can, you know, get something to fit. If the developer can make some adjustments so that it could fit that lot. Well, it seems to me, and Charlie, maybe you can answer this, if you want to table both items, is that appropriate? Well, typically we would take one of them at a time okay. um, and but she could make a motion when the when 5b is up to do the same okay. thing and the motion to table is not debatable there's no discussion on a motion to table all in favor of the motion say aye 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 Opposed? aye aye, aye. aye. Uh, i think the motion carried four to three i would request a roll call okay <laughs> jamie can you repeat the motion? Yeah, sure. I make a motion. There's a motion to table. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Table. Yes. Okay. Aye. Nay. Opposed. 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 Aye. That may be the count right, but it doesn't pass. So now we're back to the original motion that's on the table, and that's to give first reading to uh, adopting an ordinance changing the zoning, which we've repeated a couple times. So. Any further discussion on that motion? The one thing I would point out, um, yes. Your Honor, is when the Planning Commission addressed the zoning uh, issue at the last Planning Commission meeting, it was uh, stated that regardless of whether we went on to approve the project and recommend that it pass on or not, if anything's going to happen down there, it's probably going to need to be rezoned at that point those areas are going to need to be rezoned anyway for whatever project might come along to fit down there. And the vote at the Planning Commission on the rezoning was what? Unanimous. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion say I, We'll do a roll call again. All in favor of the motion say or, or say yes or raise your hand. Do you, or, no. Thumbs up or thumbs down? No? No. Barb? No. Jay? Yes? Aye. This is for the rezoning. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 That passes uh, six votes to two. And now, Bruce, I would, uh, I think that we've had all the discussion on both A and B, so I would put it back to you now as the chairman of the Community Development Committee for item 5B. 5B, okay. Before I make the motion, I need to clarify, Larry, at the CDC, I forgot to ask you, the height variance, where is that measured from again? That is measured from the ground to the top of the ground. Yeah, but I've, we've had this discussion before. Does the ground mean the street? Does the ground mean the, ground the sidewalk? The ground Does the ground next to the building. Next to the building. So that, if so, I can make a motion that it could be measured from the street level. That would 
certainly change the height, but yes, you could make that motion. Okay. Right. Okay, Your Honor, I have a resolution adopting the findings and reasons for approval of a conditional use permit to allow plan unit development to convert a resort and adjacent commercial and residential property to resort development with nine condominiums, a 69 unit hotel, and 4,000 square foot restaurant. I'm not going to read through all the <coughs> findings. I move for that subject to the CDC, first of all, eliminating number 46 in your packet, that finding. Uh, the CDC committee uh, voted or uh, recommended not to have in there, along with uh, additional conditions that the CDC committee, community development committee, had discussed. And so, as part of my motion, is that there is an entrance exit off of Lake Avenue, that the project be constructed as shown in the plans to the city, that the height measurement be from the street level, and that proper screening uh, to the north of the residential area be provided. I second that. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to adopt a resolution adopting findings of fact and reasons for approval of a conditional use permit to allow a planned unit development to convert a resort adjacent commercial and residential property to a resort development with nine condominiums, 69 unit hotel, 4,000 square foot restaurant at 90 Westlake Drive, 1331 Washington Avenue, and 1329 through 1355 Lake Avenue to also include the elimination of item 46 on the findings of fact that were adopted by the planning committee or the C community development committee uh, that there is an exit and entrance off of lake avenue into the project that the height of the building uh, be measured from street level and that there is screening placed to buffer the uh, project from the neighbors on the north end right bruce and then the other item was that the it's constructed as shown constructed in the plans as shown on the, the city plans. So discussion on the motion and mr. mayor yes. now when I made the table was that for item a or a and B I'm sorry it was for item a okay so I can I make a motion then to table this item yes. 5b until it would go back to the Planning Commission yes you can okay I make that motion is there a second second motion has been made and second at the table again there's not a debatable motion uh, all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 The motion fails. Uh, so now we're back to the original motion introduced by Alderman Amolt. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing again. I think we all understand what the motion was. Discussion by the council on a motion on the table. I guess I would like to just state that I know that we've heard from many, many people that have attended these meetings to uh, let us know of their displeasure with this item. However, I have received many comments from other people on the other side who have encouraged us to do something, who have told us it's time to get something down there that looks great, that will add to uh, our, our city. And I do think that this project is going to spark uh, enthusiasm down along the beach. Thank you. Any other comments? I would just like to point out that in some of the findings of fact, it said that it is in unity with the comprehensive plan, and in fact, it was a hotel was discouraged in the comprehensive plan of the city, and a hotel of this nature does not fit in with the aesthetics of the neighborhood. I think that we could find something. Um, something I like the science idea I think that's a great idea the science center um, and the parking issue has not ever been satisfactorily figured out what we're going to do from 179 spaces down to 139 70 of those are supposed to be for the um, for the restaurant some of them are going to be borrowed from Lake Shirts well they're going to also be using those spaces some of them are going to be uh, with the trailer some of them are going to be with um, you know, employees I think we're going to have a real parking issue down there on the beach I think it's going to stress out our parking on the street it will stress out the parking in the park and it will stress out the parking in other businesses I'm not sure where all these people are going to go okay. <coughs> further comments 
I'd like to comment that I um, heard a lot of great comments, but also uh, when I hear people say that this prop property should be used for something else. I've lived in town for 45 years now, and for the past 30, that lot down there has basically been a blight. And everybody's been searching for a business or whatever it may be to go in that spot. Years ago, the Chamber of Commerce had a committee that worked on that very thought of what can we put in there. And they worked on it for two, three years, trying to figure out with something. And they said either a major hotel or a department store, something that would revitalize that beach area. And uh, we've had many projects that come forward in front of the council, but all these people had dreams and had no money to back it up with. We had all kinds of ideas, but when it came to financing, they couldn't get anybody to finance anything. They thought the city taxpayers should pay all the money for it. Now, this go around, we've got a businessman that's come through with a great plan. He does have financing, and uh, he has a good plan, and he has good partners to make this a reality. Well, one other thing that I didn't like about here and at uh, the many meetings is that it's gonna bring competition, and it's gonna be tough on other hotels in the area. Now, I got thinking, well, how would you like it so that every time somebody would come to town, a new bank, a new auto dealer, whatever the business may be, a Walgreen drug, we say, well, wait a minute now, that's gonna be added competition, we can't have that. It's gonna be tough on the existing merchants. That's the last thing I want for our town. I want our town to grow, and you do that by being competitive. And we're gonna have people come into town, a new business, hopefully it's gonna make these existing businesses work stronger as they keep their business and make Detroit Lakes a hub for people to come because we have hotel spaces. I've had many people tell me over the last two months that they weren't able to find space for weddings, for events, whatever it may be, because we didn't have enough rooms. No, it wasn't in January, but it was in six months of the year. So I'm, I'm saying, if we've had people that have had great ideas for this corner, why haven't they come up before, and why didn't they come with their checkbook and say, not only do I have a plan, but I'm gonna be able to build it because I've got the financing. So I, I think it's a great project. It's something we've been looking uh, looking to have down there, and I think uh, we, we finally have an opportunity to have a great business down there. I, um, I'm gonna support it. Further discussion or comments? Bruce? <laughs> People know me, this is, this is a real tough decision. Um, a lot of stuff happening. Um, I think I commented at the Community Development Committee, could the process have been better by the city? Probably, absolutely, and maybe we can address that in the future on how we, we look at these things and talk about it. Uh, a couple of comments I get concerned about. When people come forth and raise questions and concerns and they're immediately labeled anti-development, that gets my back up because I think anytime you have these projects, you should be willing to listen <coughs> and try to get some ideas. So the fact that people at the Planning Commission, people wrote letters, I want to thank all those folks. I mean, I, the passion that was out there uh, with the letters, the, you know, Bob and Sally and Willis and some of the other folks who came to these meetings uh, and other folks, I appreciate that they've spoke up and I think that's important. You can tell that they concern, care about the lake and our town. And so I don't think people should be labeled anti-development just because they have questions about a project. I mean, I can tell you, give you instances in the past where I've questioned projects that the city has done, and they've done some dumb ones, trust me, <laughs> over my years here. Uh, and, and I would hopefully that people wouldn't think that because I raised those questions, I was anti-development. <clears throat> and if people know my reputation, uh, I think Madeline and the Planning Commission, Madeline, under uh, Madeline Suki's uh, leadership, the Planning Commission has done a pretty good job of being aware of variances and trying to make sure that we as a city do not get into a situation, and I, I know this is a fairness issue I hear a lot, that somebody gets a variance and then somebody else doesn't. But my time on the council, I have pushed absolutely very hard for us to comply with shoreland ordinances. I mean, you know, people know me, people have heard me come to some of these meetings. I've been at odds with the council on some of this stuff, and I think it's really, really important that we do follow the shoreline ordinance to the best of our ability, and we do protect our lake. But having said that, I've looked at this uh, piece of property, and 
I mean, they're, they're going to have a big stormwater pond there. Uh, you know, there's going to be provision for green space, open space. Uh, probably the biggest concerns I heard were the height and the parking, and I think those are fair concerns. And I think the city does have a responsibility to try to work something out for the parking. Um, but I don't know that that's the developer's issue. I think that's a city issue. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about vision down there, Mayor, and I know you're trying to keep this short, but uh, since I'm the one that has to leave early, I'm going to take a little bit of extra time here. Um, so I think from the standpoint of the site issues, I have satisfied myself that while I'm not fired up about it, I, I'm not really overly concerned, you know, the height's the height, uh, you know, at some point are we going to have a, a four-story building in Detroit Lakes? Probably. Is this the place for it? It's probably okay. If this was, for example, at the bowling alley site and it was a three or four uh, uh, proposed, three or four story proposal, I think we'd be talking a whole different conference. And that's a hint, by the way, Larry, if that developer comes forward. <laughs> We're going to have a big discussion if that's going to be what it is. But at this location where it is, I don't really see the height as an issue. I don't really see the stormwater, the impervious surface. I mean, I've thought about this, trust me. I've had some internal discussions in my household for people that know who my wife is. It's not been an easy task, but, if, but having decided that the site meets what I consider the environmental and the site issues, then I go to the next step and I say, well, it's a property rights issue. And, and again, I, I'm a big believer in property rights. And I've heard a lot of thought about the visions of what this could be. And trust me, I have 15 years ago suggested the city buy kitty land and all that land going south and make a conference center or I've had several suggestions when this last deal fell through I suggested the city buy the one site where the for those of you that are old enough remember there was a slide there and make that into parking for the city and green space so I've had a vision of that unfortunately my vision in, in, involved city funds and I couldn't get anybody else in the council to support that so if you talk about what your vision for the property is and the city's not going to buy it and you can't force somebody who owns the property to do something that doesn't make economic sense, then I, to me, a property rights means that they should be able to do what they can there as long as they're doing it within the context of our ordinances. And we've been assured by staff that the ordinances are valid for what we want to do here. And then the third issue is, and, and Ron, you probably got my, I was, was not going to try to get my dander up in this one, but <laughs> you mentioned this, so I'm going to say this. The third issue to me was the economic issue of what, how the impact is to other lodging facilities in town. That is a very valid issue, and if I could vote no on this just because of that issue alone, I would, because that is a valid issue. But just like our attorney says, I can't vote for this project simply, and even though Troy is mentioning all the economic benefits to the city, we cannot vote because of those issues. And if you're asking us to vote because of those issues, that's wrong. I cannot vote for it because of any economic uh, benefit to the city, but by that logic, neither in my mind can I vote against it just because there may be some economic harm to other businesses. But I think those businesses are, are valid in having a concern because it isn't just a matter of fair competition, it's a matter of, well, we've given a TIF as a city to the developer, we're, we're grinding these variances or conditions, however we're describing this, those are all unfair issues to a particular business, Ron. So you can't just say it's, it's open competition because it's not. But having said all that, I guess at the end of the day, I'm supporting the project. Thank you for allowing me a little extra time. As we move forward here, though, let's try not to personalize comments. I, you know, I don't want you and Ron to get into I, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything about Bruce about this, but we'll it, it, this this isn't the first tip that we've given away to a hotel complex in our community, and that's uh, so. Uh, what we've done for these folks isn't something brand new. We've done it for. A lot of other properties too. So and, and Ron and I have never disagreed before. So <laughs> yeah, all yeah. Have you just wanted everybody to know, right? <laughs> just balance the field. Yeah. Further comments, Marty. Um, I, 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 along with Madeline, um, have had a lot of supporters come forward. Um, I, I believe all the emails have been sent around, but um, I've been approached by the public uh, to in support of this project. I also. Thank everyone that's been involved in this process for coming forward. Uh, I, I truly invite input from, from each side so that we can balance out those decisions. Um, I believe that the, the developer heard those concerns at the first planning commission meeting and addressed as many of them as, as possible. 
<clears throat> I do want to put into record that the neighborhood uh, does have a concern about an entrance and exit on Lake Avenue and I with you Bruce if if I could if I would could vote no solely on that I I would but unfortunately um, I, I I have to it's in the motion Marty right? I have to let it go yep <laughs> um, so with that I'm planning on supporting the project any other comments I would just piggyback off to what Marty and Bruce alluded to thank you all for you know this is like the fourth meeting we've had there's been a lot of people here and uh, all been very polite and I, I appreciate that uh, ma'am we've restricted discussion at this time to the council I don't know if you were here at the beginning but I had laid out some rules for the meeting today so I'm sorry uh, anybody else that wants to make a comment are these comments being reflected in the minutes I'm doing my best okay. <laughs> well you got a tape too though, I have right? a tape yeah. too yeah. Okay, with that, I think we'll call the question, and all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. You got that, Glory? The motion passes six to two. Okay, again, thank you all for being polite and considerate. I'm going to recess, I assume a lot of you are going to leave because you were here for just this item. So I'm going to recess the meeting for five or six minutes. Also, older members of the council can use the bathroom. So we'll recess the <laughs> oh, back here. This regular meeting of the Detroit Lake City Council is called back to order. And I would at this time turn the balance of the Community Development Committee meeting over to uh, Madeline Suki. Uh, item C is consideration to a resolution in the matter uh, of approving the preliminary plat at for M and M Estates, I'll call him Larry to just kind of refresh our. This is a one lot flat on Highland Drive. It's a, about a 10 acre uh, tract of land, and they're separating off the house from the rest of the property. And so, with the four conditions that are listed, the Planning Commission recommended preliminary plat. Okay. Uh, the CDC reviewed it as did the Planning Commission, and I make a motion that we approve that. Is there a second? Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the preliminary plat of M&M Estates subject to four conditions which are listed on the resolution before you. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion is carried. Item D, consideration to a resolution regarding the City of Detroit Lakes finding a parcel to be occupied by a structurally substandard building. Larry, this will you a, let us know? Yeah, this is a special resolution for 1855 Lake Avenue for early renewal, and yet it would still be eligible for tax increment if it ends up in a tax increment district. This is one of the houses that was acquired for the hotel project that we just discussed, and it's in very bad shape, and they, they feel that it's more important to get it removed sooner rather than later and so in order to keep its eligibility for TIF we have to pass this resolution. Uh, the CDC reviewed this and we so move. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve a resolution of the City of Detroit Lakes finding a parcel to be occupied by a structurally substandard building. Discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. And you removed E from the consent agenda, yeah, just, which is applications for building permits, yep. and I'm going to let you take that okay. since. <laughs> the only thing I wanted to point out on our building uh, permits is that last year at this time we had zero new single family home building permits pulled. And right now, at this point of 2015, we have 14 new single family homes over three million dollars worth of value so that's all i wanted to point out to the council thank you and anything else on the uh, no there's nothing else on the agenda okay we'll move now to the public works committee okay first one is going to be item 6a consideration to accepting the codes for the 2015 bituminous repair sidewalk and construction repair and uh, mowing uh, weed lots and uh, as you see in your packet here the, uh, the the winning bids on this for the bituminous uh, uh, sent it out to many 
contractors will add one bid came in that was driveway services and they uh, got the bid for twenty nine thousand three hundred ninety five dollars and then for the concrete work uh, uh, we send it out to uh, five uh, different uh, contractors and we only had one that came back in and that was j and j concrete and they had the uh, a bid of twenty eight thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars and then for the weed lot mowing uh, that goes to uh, mike's mowing uh, we had one two three four four different companies uh, bid on that and he had the low bid of uh, uh, four dollars uh, per thousand square foot plus uh, five dollars for each mobilization cost uh, then for uh, as far as tree disease removal we had uh, nobody at all came back with a quote on that so we're going to have to work on tree removal as that comes up on us so just mentioned the, the, the winning bids on that. There was J&J Concrete and uh, Driveway Services. The committee recommends the approval of these uh, contractors to be awarded these projects. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the quotes for the 2015 bituminous repair, sidewalk construction and repair, uh, and mowing weed lots, right? And we didn't include, we didn't include the trees. Trees. So we had nobody that Correct. would bid on the trees, no. Discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Okay, the next item is uh, consideration on item 6B, consideration to approve a, a plans to construct a fence at the American Legion campground. Uh, we, we did have a member of the club came and the, the reason they want to put this six foot fence up is because they've had some vandalism and some intruders and so on and so forth. And because of that, uh, they would like to be able to put uh, a fence and it meets our ordinances and so uh, I recommend that we approve the site uh, approval for the American Legion campground. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the plans to construct a fence at the American Legion campground. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Ron, could I just, I should have asked if there's anyone in the audience that's got an item later on that I would certainly move up. I see Jeff Staley's here so maybe we should and I apologize, Jeff, but if without objection, could we move to Jamie's agenda because there's uh, something with the mouth and it's on the Finance Committee. Okay, item 7A is consideration to approving the 2015 Detroit Mountain Summer Rates. Uh, the rates are enclosed in your packets, and I think Jeff Staley is here to give us some information on that. Good evening. Hi, hey, Jeff. I was okay standing in the back. I was sitting all day, so all right. <laughs> that was good. Um, so uh, our board has presented uh, the Finance Committee with um, our proposed summer rates, and you have those in front of you. Um, before we go into the specifics of the rates, um, and just to let everybody know, our planned operation um, would typically run from Memorial Day to Labor Day um, each summer. Um, where we would be open to the public for hiking, biking, um, general use. Um, this year with construction of um, uh, the remaining mountain bike trails as well as remaining construction from uh, ski operations, we will not open until June 27th. Um, and uh, at that time, the full facility will be open. Um, the, uh, the grounds will be available for use seven days a week during daylight hours, essentially sun up to sundown. Uh, the lodge itself will be open uh, seven days a week uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10, uh, 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, uh, with uh, uh, the ability to use um, restrooms, services, uh, um, uh, collect information on trails, um, some simple concessions, uh, water, Gatorade, that sort of thing. Um, outside of that, the lodge will be open for bike rentals uh, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Seven days a week, we'll have a full complement of bike rentals um, uh, for all ages and abilities, um, as well as protective uh, um, helmets and pads. Uh, Chairlift operation will run um, Friday through Sunday um, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and that will um, accommodate both pedestrian um, as well as cyclist use. Um, and uh, 
that again would run typically Memorial Day to Labor Day with the exception of this year and our construction schedule with the trails. Um, so this will be open June 27th for the first time this year. Uh, getting into the trail use fees, um, uh, in keeping with our overall um, uh, mission uh, statement and uh, wanting to provide uh, access uh, and um, use of the facility, um, it will be structured similar to uh, state parks and other recreation areas where there's a, a nominal um, vehicle pass for any type of foot traffic, trail use, picnicking, sightseeing, um, what have you. We've proposed $5 per vehicle there. One person, $5, five people in the vehicle, still $5. Um, if they choose to um, purchase a lift ticket to do a scenic lift ride, um, then that um, fee would be included in the price of a lift ticket. Well, I take a breath, is there any questions so far? I'm like Bruce, I'm trying to move along. <laughs> Say, Jeff, on your food service, you said there's just other than water and Gatorade and stuff, but will you have food service so like on weekends, like for Saturday and Sunday? Uh, at this time, we are undecided on that. Um, for major events, we will likely do some type of um, grilling and uh, you know have a, a one type of one time uh, type of food service. Um, but uh, at this point, we're not planned to open our full concessions. Um, we can do uh, snack items like. Um, uh, refrigerated, pre-made refrigerated sandwiches, yogurts, granola bars, power bars, that sort of thing. So there will, will be some uh, food items there, but it will be kind of the grab and go nature. Okay, so getting into the rates um, uh, for bike uh, lift um, service, uh, we are proposing $8 per ride. Um, $25 all day. A scenic pedestrian um, foot traffic ride would be slightly less at $5. Or an all day ride, I don't envision selling many all day foot traffic um, passes, but you never know. Um, as far as the season passes go, um, for unlimited mountain bike uh, trail and lift, the fee would be $150. Uh, an unlimited family um, pass would be 375. Uh, if you just want to ride um, uh, the trails uh, without the lift service, it would be $50 um, for a family 125. And again, this pricing is for mountain bike traffic, um, which uh, requires more maintenance and upkeep of the trails. Um, uh, a day use pass um, for a bike would be $5, a family $15, again, um, to hike, run, um, picnic, sightsee, uh, then that would be the $5 vehicle um, fee. Largely um, based off of the honor system. So um, during operating hours, we would have our staff inside the building collecting fees and um, uh, educating uh, folks on the need for that fee structure. Outside of those operation hours, we would have a collection to similar to state parks where it would be largely um, uh, in our system. We put cash in it and <coughs> drop it in a, um, a collection to. Uh, our rental rates for bikes are listed there as well. Um, uh, providing both full and half day rental rates um, as well as a reduced evening um, structure similar to what we did with our Monday Madness pricing for um, uh, the ski season. Uh, again, making that more accessible, more affordable on those off-peak hours. Thanks, Jeff. Any questions for Jeff? And our action this evening will be to uh, approve these rates Correct, Jamie? Yes. Okay. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the Detroit Mountain Summer Rates. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thanks for coming, Jeff. And we look forward to seeing how the summer is going to go. The winter was great, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, since we rent bikes, there's no excuse. I'd like to see everybody out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Carly's here Can for 6H. Carly? 
I'm sorry that I didn't recognize that you were here too. And without objection, <laughs> could we go to 6H? Okay, 6H. Uh, consideration to request to submit, uh, uh, submitted by KKW 89.9 FM uh, out of Callaway Radio for the third annual. How do you pronounce that again? Ba in a kind there you go. Repeat that's that. what that's what it is. <laughs> For their radio uh, gala celebration of Minnesota Music and Art Festival on May uh, 9th and uh, 10th, they have a rented pavilion. Request the use of a portion of the city park and the beach for various activities, as listed in this in their letter. Uh, there's going to be uh, 19 bands uh, plus other musicians. They're, they're going to have craft tables set up both uh, inside and out, and it looks like a, a good event. And uh, the committee looked over this and. Uh, they approved it, and I uh, was so moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Carly, do you want to add anything, or are you good to? No, I was just <laughs> hoping that you guys would say yes, because we're really excited to bring the Minnesota musicians and artists to this area, especially for those that don't have the opportunity to be on stage or perform in front of others. So. Okay. And again, I apologize that I didn't move you up on the agenda. <laughs> That's but okay. You didn't lose too much time. <laughs> and, 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 and there's no no charge for this event, is that correct? That's right. It's free um, to the public, and uh, we open the doors at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we're going till 8.30 in the evening. And so, May 9th and 10th, it's fishing up our Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> yes. So there's a lot of activities going on down by the beach, and hopefully people can come down and bring their families. We hopefully bouncy houses provided by the Whitehurst Police Department. Um, a fire show on the beach part um, on the night, and then um, yeah, just food, fun, Central Market's catering, and it should be a really good time. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion is carried. Thanks. And now I don't think there's any more. Thank you. I don't think there's. I think we'll go back, Ron, to. Hi. No. Are we good to go back to the public works, Ron? Okay. The next item there is a 6C consideration request to submit by the Lake Area Farmers Market for to use People's Park uh, for the 2015 season, which will start May 16th and run through uh, October. Whatever the weather uh, gets bad, uh, they'll quit. But as long as October is nice, they'll go all the way through if they can. And uh, they, they have the request included uh, in your uh, packet there, and uh, the committee approves this, and uh, I was so moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the request submitted by the Lakes Area Farmers Market to use People's Park for the 2015 season. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Next item is uh, item D, due to the scheduling construction of Washington Avenue, the DLCCC is requesting a change of location for the 2015 street fair uh, that will be uh, taking uh, in downtown Detroit Lakes on May 30th, 2015. And it's uh, basically going to be in this same lo location, but just uh, one block west. And they're going to be using uh, uh, part of uh, Washington Avenue. Uh, they're also going to be uh, using part of the homes. They'll be using them, the streets in front of the courthouse in Bell Bank. Uh, they'll be using part of this uh, street on the side there by the Congo Church. Uh, Brad, any other comments you might have as far as locations? Uh, no, it's basically from the alley by the Congregational Church up to the, uh, so the drive through the Bell State Bank will still be used. They'll set up some in the uh, mall parking lot if they need to. And then the home street will be shut down just like it always has been the did for you. And uh, Amy Stern is in charge of that, and she has talked to all the businesses in the courthouse to make sure, and, and, and she said they've been very gracious and fine with that street up to there being blocked off, so uh, okay. there doesn't seem to be any objection on the Thanks, Brad. Brad? Okay, and uh, so we did, we uh, approved that, we made the We need a motion. motion. I mean, okay, I'll go ahead and committee approved, and I so move. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded to, uh, to approve the uh, change in location for the 2015 street fair at the lakes, May 30th, 2015. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. I've got off one there. I'm trying to get used to this uh, <laughs> tablet here. It's, You're doing uh, a pretty good job. Well, I'm, uh, it's, uh, it's coming along, but uh, I was thinking we're still going to have paper until May, and so I got jumped into it. Well, you're already drawing it. Yeah, no, I'm getting there. <laughs> it's, it's coming here. Let's go to item E. Consideration request submitted by Bale Scarrow 
with a Soul Motion Race the Management LLC to conduct the Illuminite 5K Marathon on June 20th. This is going to be a, an event that is put on by the Kiwanis Club. We had the first one last year and it went over very well. It's uh, glow lights, it comes on after dark and there's a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know, Carrie, do you want to speak a little bit about where the, going to change the venue a little bit on as far as their route, but it's pretty similar to what we had last year. Yeah, they're going to change the route. Um, rather than starting in People's Park, they're actually going to start at the um, track at the high school and head east from there. So towards Speakeasy, loop around and come back again at the track. So um, we won't be at the beach, but we're moving around and uh, making room. So there's lots of room for construction on Washington Avenue. <laughs> Okay, the committee recommends, and I so move that we go ahead uh, uh, with the motion raise. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve uh, the request from uh, for the sole motion race management company to conduct a 5K marathon June 20th, 2015. Discussion of the motion? Yeah. Marty? I just want to point out that the... Uh, that Bill had attended this meeting and was concerned, wants to make sure that everybody knows that the speakers for the loud system and the music will be pointed away from the residential areas as much as possible to cut down on the noise. Can you convey that for us? Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Next <laughs> item, number F, authorization for the Wise Guys uh, Car Club to hold Sunday cruise nights on May 3rd, June 7th, July 5th, August 2nd, September 6th, and October 4th of 2015 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's on a Sunday night in there. They're set up in the parking lot in front of the O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Uh, they had a similar event last year and. Uh, they had uh, good results, and they like to do it again this year. And the committee uh, looked it over, and they said, "Move that we do it again." There a second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the request for them from the Wise Guys Car Club to hold Sunday cruise nights, as noted by Alderman Zeman. Is this the same thing that was on Westlake Drive? Is no, this is not a different. This is a small, smaller group. Okay. Uh, discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. <coughs> Next item is item G. Uh, this authorization for Shields All Sports to conduct the fifth annual Shields Paddle Demo Day on uh, June 20, 2015, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the Detroit Lakes, uh, Little Detroit, in front of the American Legion uh, Club. It's uh, uh, it's uh, similar to what they've had before, but they're hoping to, uh, to enlarge, uh, you know, the participation, and uh, they're hoping this year they'll have up to 225 uh, paddle boats out there, and uh, should be a good event. And uh, it's worked out in the past, and uh, the committee recommends an ISO move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to. We're on I, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I lost it. No G. 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 For sure. So I thought you were talking about paddle boards, and I'm looking at runners. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, Shields All Sports uh, annual Shields Paddle Day Demo Day on June 20th from 11 to 3 on Detroit Lake. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item is I. Consideration the request is submitted by Alyssa Sell to hold a family uh, a, fi a finally free K marathon for the Lakes Crisis Center on September 18th and 19th, 2015, at the City Park uh, in, uh, in in North Shore Drive. This is the event. It's going to be a fundraiser that they're going to have for this uh, 5K marathon, and the money that's raised will go to the Crisis Center. And uh, uh, looks like it'll be. It's a brand new event. And it's on a middle of September, so it, uh, we should be have lots of room for runners down there, and the, the committee looked it over, and uh, I still move that we approve it. Second. Sure. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the request uh, to hold a finally free 5K marathon uh, for the benefit of the Lakes Crisis Center on September uh, 18th and 19th. 19th. I think the race is actually on the 19th, right? Right, yeah. 18th is a little bit, a little bit at night, yep. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion is carried. Next item is item uh, J. Consideration request is submitted by uh, Arian uh, Haffey to hold a wedding ceremony at the City Beach across the American Legion on August 15th, 2015. It's, uh, they expect to have six, 65 to 70 people at their wedding, and it's gonna be from five to six o'clock in the evening. Uh, they're gonna ask that we would go ahead and uh, 
um, have an arch for their wedding ceremony for pictures and it's the same conditions that we've uh, asked of the other weddings that we're that's going to be a popular spot for weddings and so it'll be under the same conditions they're going to have to do their own cleanup and uh, so forth down there and, uh, okay. the committee recommends i would still move is there a second second <laughs> motion has been made and seconded to allow Ariane Happy to hold her wedding ceremony on the City Beach Cross in the American Legion on August 15th. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those motions carry. Next item is item K. Consideration request from the Youth Hockey Association to construct an addition to the arena. And what they're looking at is to uh, uh, put up a 100 by 40 foot building between building uh, sheet rock or sheet ice of one and two. Uh, put in the 4,000 square foot building that they can use for uh, workouts and so forth on uh, just regular concrete. Uh, and uh, they're looking at uh, doing some of the fundraising themselves, but they also would like to uh, you know, get started as soon as possible, but it's not something they're going to do tomorrow, so they've got time to get their organization together and, and get behind this, but they're excited about having the youth hockey thing. It's, they've got more members now than they've ever had before. This is the same group that also does the summer hockey league every year. Uh, Brad, do you have anything else you want to add to that? No, just that they're looking into it, and the youth hockey group has been very good to the city, and they've put a lot of capital money in there and really helped us keep that facility up in the past, and they've followed through on all their pledges. So no action, though, Rod, it's just informational at this time? Just information, and they, they well, they would like to have approval that, that to go ahead and because they do want to get their plans kind of going okay. and and jamie's going to have the second part of this too but that's going to that part's going to go forward the next month to get more information but they would like to you know be known that we're behind them on this so they can get something going because they want to write money for grants and try to get some grant money too so they we have to give them some assurance that we're behind them on it so i the committee recommends i move that we go ahead and allow them to go ahead with this building there a second. Yeah, second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. So what we do is we give them approval to do this. And we're not committing any funds to the project no, at this time. No, correct. Okay, is there discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. You're a busy guy. I mean, I, you got uh, more? We did have one other item. We had a gentleman from a church that came in and wanted to put up a uh, uh, church information was uh, around town and he was going to come back and give us the locations but did we ever hit back he brought in some in information but we need to get additional information so we'll bring them back to the committee in may so we'll come back okay. in may with it okay ron thank you and i would move to jamie for the finance committee balance Okay, item 7B is consideration to authorizing acceptance of the 2015, 16, and 17 labor agreement between the Minnesota Teamsters Public and Law Enforcement Employees Union, local number 320, and the City of Detroit Lakes, and I believe Bob has more information. Now this is the uh, union agreement with the police department that would provide for two and a half percent increase in each of the years. It contains the same provisions for insurance that we have with our other existing unions and you know, any increase in the insurance policy that would be required to pick up 25% of that. Um, other than that, there aren't any major changes uh, to, the, to this agreement. Um, we will be paying out the uniform allowance slightly different than we have in the past because there are some items that um, the officers purchase flashlights, things of that nature, some glasses that technically aren't covered via the uniform allowance because of some IRS regulations. So um, they would have an opportunity if they haven't spent all of their funds on the eligible items to uh, get paid out. They would, there would be some tax implications for them, but they could use it for those other items outside of the general uh, guideline of IRS. Okay. Jamie? Okay. Um, the committee recommends approval, and I so move. Second. Should quickly, Mr. Mayor, this is all within the budget that we approved too. So. Okay, good. Uh, the motion's been made and seconded to accept the 2015, 16, and 17 labor agreement between the Minnesota Teamsters Public and Law Enforcement Employees Union Local Number 320 and the City of Detroit Lakes. Discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion's carried. 
Item 7C is consideration to authorize an acceptance of the 2015-16-17 Memorandum of Agreement of Working Rules and Regulations between the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO Local Union Number 568, and the City of Detroit Lakes. And again, Bob has more information. This is the union agreement with the employees in the Public Works and Liquor Store Departments. Um, it has the same provisions as we discussed for the um, Police Department, with the exception of uh, the uniform allowance is handled differently. It's a clothing allowance for them so that they don't ruin their personal clothing on that, on the job. And um, other than that, I think the provisions with, in terms of the uh, wages and the insurance and those benefits are the same. They are consistent with what is in our budget. And um, so uh, we did review this with a couple members of the council who were appointed to be part of the negotiating committee. And I think it was recommended that we carry this forward to the council for your consideration. Okay, is there a motion to approve, Jamie? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to authorize acceptance of the 2015-16-17 Memorandum of Agreement of Working Rules and Regulations between the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO, Local Union 560, and the City of Detroit Lakes. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. <clears throat> Item 70 is consideration to the request for, don for a donation submitted by the Detroit Lakes High School Post Prom 2014 Committee. Uh, the donation request is for $150 from the Liquor Fund and $150 from the Public Utilities Fund. Uh, I believe that that has been already approved by Public Utilities in the amount of $300, actually. Uh, and. I believe that the liquor committee is has approved 150 dollars yes. donation so yep. the committee recommends approval and i so move second okay motion's been made and second and just for clarification jamie are you your motion is to approve 150 from the liquor fund correct and the puc is doing their they've already done it yeah further discussion all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion's carried item 70 is consideration to a request for a donation in the amount of $10,000 submitted by the Detroit Lakes Regional Chamber of Commerce in relation to the downtown redevelopment project. This is uh, the Diggin' Downtown DL uh, campaign that they have dis discussed with us. Um, the committee met with them today and, uh, oh, Carrie is here. Carrie, would you like to come up? Three minutes, Carrie. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. I, I am the Chamber of Commerce, but really representing the entire downtown um, and the committee that's been getting together. Um, the Chamber only represents about 50% of the businesses in the downtown area. Um, we know well over 100 in the uh, district. So um, we are requesting some support. We know that this is going to affect um, not only businesses, but places like the liquor store and those that are in the outskirts of the traffic patterns. So we're looking at a campaign that's really going to market Detroit Lakes as a place to still come, whether you're a tourist here for the day or you're someone who's here for the summer or um, just visiting around over the weekend, make sure that they know that they should come to downtown and still do their shopping, um, do their grocery shopping, do their, their retail, and uh, uh, visit their favorite service business downtown. So we're looking at some for some support to help with that campaign. The downtown businesses are committed to gathering sponsorships and, and uh, marketing cooperative efforts. Um, we're looking to gather $25,000 for a um, large campaign. Ultimately, the campaign would be worth about $60,000 if you were going to buy it right off the bat. We have great partnership with our media, um, DL newspapers, and also Lincoln Broadcasting have been really great to reduce those rack rates and get us some great rates, along with we're looking at other marketing than just the Detroit Lakes. We know we need to be broader than that. We have people from, coming from Fargo. They need to know it's still good to come down Highway 10. Thanks, Gary. So after discussion, you know, I think there's a lot of funding uh, for the project from various sources, but um, at our committee meeting today, we discussed uh, providing $5,000 from the liquor fund. And so um, the committee has recommends approval of that amount and I so move. Is second. there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to donate $5,000 to the Detroit Lakes. Uh, would, would it be a donation to the chamber, Carrie? Is that how we're working this? We're going to be the fiscal agent, yes. Okay. Donation to the chamber, and it's for 
the digging downtown the promotional things, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion on the motion? Matt, yes. The, I did run this in front of the Liquor Committee, too, and the members were in good with it. Favor? So, okay, good. We really consider it a, a, a donation from the liquor fund, from the liquor store, which yep. also is part of this downtown redevelopment project. Um, yep. And so that's why we think it's a, a, good, yep. a good idea for us. Hopefully that thing gets built and done quick, right? So anyway, further discussion. Well, the, the, the one concern I have, and I did mention at the finance committee, is that uh, I'm hoping that not only the city gives money, but also that the merchants all kick and give on that. And I, as I mentioned before, I asked a number of merchants downtown this last week about it when I got this information. None of them had been approached or knew anything what I was talking about. So I'm hoping that the businesses uh, will go ahead and uh, put up their money to advertise this because the taxpayers is uh, coming up with this money and I'm hoping that they'll also in return will do that so we can get, get the advertising that you're needing. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. That wraps that up, Jamie. Okay. Yep. We're going to go to Marty for the Public Safety Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, item 8A is city, the city Assistant City Attorney Karen Scoyles was going to be presenting information regarding the Becker County DWI Court, but um, but she's not here. She's at another meeting. I can answer any questions. Or Marty, you were at the meeting. You can probably do essentially a summary, unless you want me to do a summary. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think too there was quite a few council members that heard Miss Squall. Okay. So I'd be happy to answer Squoiled, questions, but we commonly call her. I might go <laughs> beyond what I really know if I get too far into it. So. Any questions that you would have? Uh, she did leave a brochure also, and so sounds like a good deal. Is there any action we need to take? I don't. Uh, she's entered into a memorandum of agreement between the city attorney's office and this organization, which she is a part of. And, and the only, we, it was time to let the city know that we're engaging in this, and this is uh, an effort to try to do something beyond what the traditional court system does to deal with um, repeat alcohol offenders and you know there's no guarantee that it's going to work it's sort of a if you never know till you try and and uh, she and uh, judge evans and the county attorney's office and a number of other entities and organizations have been working on this for a year she was actually um, there was a grant received by white earth um, she went to el paso texas last fall to get trained that type of thing so if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to either uh, try to wield them or more likely refer them to her. So I, I know when I'm beyond my ability. Thank you, Charlie. So do we need to approve the agreement or not at this point? No, I, it's between the city attorney's office and the organization. Oh, okay. and, and I don't right. think it's necessary. We just wanted to make sure the city was aware of it. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Thank Marty. you. Uh, item 8B is consideration to a resolution authorizing a speed study for Long Lake Drive. Uh, there is no physical resolution needed, just uh, approval by the council, is that there, correct? There is no template, basically. We just, MnDOT needs authorization for the, the city authorizing them to conduct the study on Long Lake Drive um, from the Long Lake Road to Longview Lane. Okay. So. Um, the committee discussed this and moves for approval. Seconded. Okay, motion been made and seconded to conduct a speed study for Long Lake Drive. Discussion on the motion. I, was, I, I don't know if you mentioned, but it, it is up to 40 miles an hour. We could have raised it 35 without all going, you know, through this channel, but uh, the number of residents out there felt that since Detroit Lakes is having uh, 40 mile an hour speed limits on theirs, that uh, they too would like to have that higher speed zone out there. And so that's what this study is all about. And, and we'll see what the uh, MnDOT does with it, what it comes back with more information. Okay. Where all of that? Oh, no, I was just putting my glasses. <laughs> it's like being at an auction. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Did we have a motion on the floor? Yeah, yes. Exactly. Okay, further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, I just wanted to comment that the volunteer fire department responded to 19 calls for service in March. And um, on behalf of the police department, I'll have the chief expand on this a little bit, but uh, 
the Lakes and River Drug and Violent Crimes Drug Task Force, along with uh, our local officers, uh, had a very active month last month also. Yeah, we've just seen a real big increase in uh, our proactivity with the Drug Task Force. Uh, we had a, a pretty major uh, methamphetamine bust here about a month ago or a few weeks ago. And, uh, uh, task Force Officer Gary Kuhn has prepared a uh, kind of a quarterly report. Uh, I just got it like yesterday. So for next month, I'll submit that. Uh, just kind of on, on the Drug Task Force's uh, activities. So. Look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Yeah. Can you comment a little bit about the, the Facebook page, the effectiveness of our Facebook page as well? Yeah, we've had the Facebook page for a little over a year. Um, a week ago, Monday, uh, we had a burglary at M State, and uh, so we, we threw some pictures out on Facebook, and um, we had, uh, had, as of right now, like over 31,000 hits on those pictures, and within about an hour and a half of posting the pictures, we had a suspect named, and uh, it was phenomenal. We just did the same thing um, yesterday, too, and put some pictures out there of a, of a person of interest we're looking for for some felony-level crimes, and um, Sergeant Strand came back to work and had like 16 tips, all with the same name, so uh, it's very effective. It's free, it's out there, and it's working really well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That Anything else, Marty? No, sir. You know, as long as you've got the floor, mm -hmm. could I ask you as the liaison to our Housing and Redevelopment Authority to just briefly, yes. sort of late, <laughs> Very briefly, briefly tell us a little bit about what, uh, what's been transpiring? Effects. Sure. Um, as all of you are probably aware, we've been in discussion with the county for several months about partnering with their housing program and providing supervision to those programs. Uh, we met approximately three months ago with representatives of Becker County and to discuss the options. And we advised the representatives of the board that we would like to advertise for uh, retiring Gordy Grable's position prior to making any further commitment to, to that program or that merger. Um, the, in order to make this effective, the board felt that we would need to hire a candidate that is experienced in several areas of the housing programs um, to properly assume the dual role of, of Gordy um, and his current position. In the middle of March, the board advertised for the positions for Gordy's upcoming retirement. We received nine responses and had a special meeting on April 8th to review the applicants. Prior to reviewing the applicants, a newspaper article was published explaining that the county was pursuing a contract with the MMCDC uh, to manage the housing programs for the county. Last Tuesday, Commissioner Grimsley, during the joint meeting, uh, told the group that they were close to an agreement with the MMCDC for the management for the county programs. The board met yesterday to consider, or I'm sorry, on Monday, yeah, yesterday, uh, to consider further discussion with the county about creating a joint meeting uh, for this to happen, the board felt they would need to hire a candidate experienced in this type of merger, requiring a program, requiring the funding from both the county and the city to properly fund this. Uh, with the recent information releases from the county, um, the board voted to no longer pursue a joint program with the county at this time uh, and anticipate the hiring of a, of a replacement for Gordy with a start date of June 1st. Uh, if the county wishes to pursue this option in the future, uh, we would certainly be open to that, but uh, we would like to wait for at least a year for the new director to gain the proper experience needed. Okay, thank you, Marty. Appreciate it. Is there uh, anything else you have on your agenda? Otherwise, we'll move to the Liquor Committee. And Dan, anything on the Liquor Committee? Nothing you're on. Okay, and then we'll go to... Jamie, could I ask you to... Or, Public utilities. Yeah, could I ask, Jamie, could you take those public utility items, please? Sure. And if we have questions, we can have Bob uh, answer the. And we've got that. Vernell here, too. And Vernell's here, too, yeah. So he's hiding in the back. Alrighty. Uh, item 10A is consideration to the request to purchase a double cab work truck chassis only budgeted item. And the bid tabulation is in your packet. Um, and it looks like. For now, do you want to speak to this? Yes, I do. Our recommendation is to go with Nearsons, no trade, and we'll sell the box outright and sell the 
uh, van out rate, which will give us the lowest net cost going to Nearson Chevrolet. Okay. Okay, but it says here that the net price is twenty five thousand four twenty nine with Nearson and Norseman is twenty four thousand nine seventy five. Yes, yeah, so that's what the trade we take the trade okay. off of that. Okay, thank you. All right. We would entertain a motion then, Jamie. Uh, motion to approve. Okay, is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to purchase a double cab work truck for the public utilities uh, department as a budgeted item. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. 10B is approval of the request for Q. Request for qualifications. Qualifications for the wastewater treatment facility design and construction management service. And there's more information in your packet. And Brunel, I'm sure you want to speak to this. Yes, we've completed the facility plan for the wastewater treatment plant. And our next step is to go into the design phase and project management phase. So we created this RFQ to send out to the two top ranked firms that we interviewed when we did the facility plan, which is SCH and Apex. We'll send this to them. They have May, until May 22nd to respond uh, and go through the request for qualifications. And that's what this will be, it'll be a request for qualifications and determination of who we're gonna hire on qualifications. There is a bid tab and a fee structure um, worksheets in the packet. They will be in a sealed envelope and we'll make this, try to make the sole determination based on the qualifications of the firms to do the design and construction management of the wastewater treatment facility. Okay. Okay, the Public Utilities Commission recommends approval and I so move. Second it. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the request for qualifications for the wastewater treatment facility design and construction management service. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Item 10C is recommendation to hire a geographic information system services firm. Does anyone have more information on that? Yes, uh, this was handed out to you uh, prior to the meeting today. Over the last several months, utility and city staff have worked pretty diligently to put a master plan for GIS uh, system to the city and the building Detroit Lakes. Uh, through that master plan, it was approved in July of 2014. The commission, the council both approved that. Uh, since that time, we've put together an RFQ to uh, determine who we want to talk to about doing GIS services for the city and utility. Mm -hmm. Sent out 13 RFQs to initial respondents and a couple other people requested it after it was advertised in the paper and published. Uh, we had six responses back. E2S, Bowman Bank, Midland GIS, Pro West, they partnered with Star Energy and Apex Engineering, Stantec, and Alltech. Uh, the staff use a scoring metric to determine the highest ranked firm, and the scoring is on the back of the cover sheet that was handed out to you. And you see that Midland GIS was the highest ranked firm based on qualifications with Bowman Bank a close second. So given that, we went through and contacted references for Midland GIS, we contacted them and talked to them and addressed my answers, questions to our answers, answers to our questions. And uh, we are going to recommend Midland GIS out of Maryville, Missouri, to do our GIS system for the city and utility of Detroit Lakes. Uh, their proposed fee is 175206 and that is for the electric, water, and wastewater utilities. And between those utilities, the city has 183,000 budgeted in 2015 for this project. Okay, thank you for now. Okay. All right, the Public Utilities Commission recommends approval, and I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the recommendation of the Public Utilities Commission to hire a geographic information system services firm as outlined by Verdell. Discussion on the motion? I guess I have one question. Is this a long time firm that's been doing this? Uh, has a good reputation if something needs to be done they can bring the staff in right away and very, take care of things very good this is their specialty they do no engineering services they specialize in gis and geographical information systems they're very very good at it and they anticipate they can start uh the middle of latter part of may okay. about to be about a one-year project all right did we vote no no i'm fading <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, 
Tom and Pam Mortensen were here at the beginning of the meeting, if you can remember back that was that long. And so as yesterday. Everybody yeah, everybody's invited to tomorrow to the GAR park at one PM for that program. And we took care of the Girl Scout week and also Arbor Day is coming up and that's going to be held at the sports arena brad at april 28th at 2 p.m is that right yeah so it's going to be part of the big uh work with the water department of public utilities okay. the water quality day which were how many hundred people Verdella, uh 400, 400 students 400 students we're going to have there so we thought we'd incorporate that in at the same time as arbor day okay thank you um Dave Langworthy uh, served out the term of Jeff Jasperson, and it was about a year, I think, and that term has expired, so he served out just a partial term on the chamber, uh, or the tourism board, and he uh, represents the chamber. And Dave has agreed to continue if we reappoint him, and I would recommend that we do so. I would still move. Second. Motion has been made and second that we reappoint Dave Langworthy to the tourism board. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. I have not uh, located a, a member to replace Scott Melhoff on the tourism board because and he's Scott has served his three three-year terms and is not eligible to be reappointed. And we typically would send out a thank you to Scott for his service, right? Okay. Uh, the Park Fest is coming up, the 8th Annual Park Fest. That's coming up Thursday, May 15th, a fun event for everybody and kind of a kickoff to summer, so I encourage everybody to try to be at that. The Board of Equalization is also approaching and will meet on Thursday, April 30th in the second floor at the courthouse, starting at 9.30, and we've got our Finance Committee and, and Vice Mayor Zeman yeah. are on that board. Correct? Mm -hmm. And that uh, starts at 9 a.m. And we broke ground in the digging downtown. And Sherry Blaine's retirement open house will be uh, Friday, May 1st in the council chambers. Sherry's retiring uh, after 24 years with the public utility department. Is there anything else that any of the city staff have that should be brought before the council tonight? Madeline, anything else? Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, none, Your Honor. I don't have to uh, Jay, sir, Barb, Jamie. We made it. The business of this council has come to a conclusion and the meeting is adjourned.